what have everybody eaten here? So acquiring a PlayStation 5 right now is kind of possible already compared to last year where only the lucky mother loving ones are able to get one. Now what retailers are doing is selling you these shitty bundles. But uh, paying SRP is way better than buying it off from a scalper. So now you're probably looking for a 4K TV that can take advantage of next generation graphics. I might actually have the answer for you and you won't believe that it's only 25,000 pesos. So stick around and let's find out if the Mi TV P1 is going to be worth getting or is just a waste of money. Let us try to unbox this thing first. And let me also give you a rundown of the P1 specification. This is a 4K TV with VA panel at 60 Hertz refresh rate with MEMC technology, HDR10+, Dolby Vision support, DCP3 at 94% color gamut, 1.07 billion colors, HDMI 2.1, eARC, it's also an Android TV with Google Voice Assistant, 360 Bluetooth remote, then Dolby Audio and DDS HD. These are actually flagship specifications that mostly high-end TVs have. So does it actually translate to an excellent display at only 25,000 pesos. So this is a big ass TV with a mostly plastic construction. Its design is quite similar to any modern TVs with thin bezels. The bottom one is a little thick, but it's forgivable. It actually houses some of its peripherals like the microphone, power and navigation keys. The actual bezels are actually thin. However, the display area have a sizable border as you can see here. The built-in mic here does not actually work. However, you know, if you say, okay, Google, it's actually gonna pick your voice up no matter how far you are from the television. It is not the slimmest TV like what Samsung has, but not the bulkiest too. I was able to pair it with the usual TV mount here without any issues. Let me show you its IOs as well. We see three HDMI ports with eARC that supports up to HDMI 2.1. Okay, PS5 fans don't get too excited. It may have HDMI 2.1, but it does not support variable refresh rate, free sync, and yeah, no 120 Hertz refresh rate here. And yeah, it also has an Ethernet LAN port and an RF port for your cable TV. Connecting this to your speaker is going to be quite flexible. For high-end home theaters or sound bars, the HDMI eARC is actually the best option for you. This will enable lossless Dolby Atmos through Dolby HD or DTS HD Master Audio or DTS X on your Blu-ray or media players. However, if your receiver or sound bar does not support any of those, don't worry, there is an optical connection. But what if you don't have any of those connection and you only have a basic speaker? You're all covered. This has a 3.5 millimeter audio output. It is a weird set of IOs in today's standards, but I'm not complaining. This is going to be highly beneficial to us consumers. Like literally you can connect any of your high end home theater system up to the most basic speakers that you have in your house. And again, if you don't want to resort to big ass speakers, don't worry. You can connect any of your uh, wireless Bluetooth headphones and voila. And uh, connecting any of your Bluetooth devices like soundbars or wireless headset is just easy. Just go to settings, add peripherals and sync it. So with this free Xiaomi soundbar, I noticed that there is some delays if you're watching movies. So I would advise you to purchase an optical cable and use that instead. Uh, the remote is also Bluetooth enabled, so you don't need to like aim it on the TV. So the one I have here is the 55 inch model at 4K resolution at 60 Hertz on a TCL manufactured VA panel. You know, if you play the right content, it is actually quite beautiful. You will be amazed by the amount of detail you can get out of this TV, considering again, the right conditions. As expected, you will not have the deepest black of what an AMOLED screen can offer. However, the picture quality is 
you know, it's not bad at all. The MEMC feature does a pretty good job as well in smoothening the flow of motion on your movies. It is very effective on non-action type shows like drama or comedy. However, if there is a fast moving scene or, you know, let's say Spider-Man swinging off buildings, some pixels will be remarkable. It feels like it's struggling in filling up the additional frames, which just totally destroys the fluid effect. I just normally set it to clean mode instead of smooth as you will rarely see any pixelation on fast moving scenes. With colors comparing it to my gaming monitor, even on vivid color display, I still find my monitor to have a bit more punchier, you know, more vibrant and contrasty color reproduction. Though this TV is brighter or maybe because it's a bigger display. I, I really don't have the tool to measure how bright it is, but yeah, the TV appears to be a bit more brighter. However, if you're not doing any side-by-side -side comparison, like what most of us consumers would do, I mean, it's fine. You won't even really notice it. Overall, I'm actually enjoying watching a lot of movies here. I mean, it's 4K resolution. You know, the frames are smooth, plus, you know, color reproduction is quite good as well. All right, so the PlayStation 5. But before we talk about that, um, you know, I just want to plug my YouTube channel and we're close to the 1,000 subscriber count. So if you like the content that you're seeing here on my channel, you know, show your support by clicking on to the like button and the subscribe button. And if you want to get notified on our future uploads, just click on that bell button right there. So PS5 detail is actually here. Awesome graphics, you know, with Miles Morales on actual gameplay, especially on cutscenes, you will be able to see those fine details, you know, wrinkles, skin pores, and other nuances. The TV is huge too, so it's going to give you eye candy for days. You know, the big bot is the HDR. The TV has all the bells and whistles, but sadly, the TV does not have enough peak brightness and not enough contrast to pull off a great HDR scene. Uh, look at this shot of Miles. The details, textures, and design are just non-existent on Miles Morales' uh, costume. All you see is black. It's such a big eyesore and it bugs me every time. And let me actually show you that same scene on my BenQ gaming monitor, which also support HDR. So yeah, you see the difference, right? Everything is properly exposed. Well, that's basically how HDR should work. Auto HDR tone mapping should actually resolve this issue, but sadly is only available on high-end TVs. Also pro tip, first time you're setting up your PS5 or you know any console for that matter, all of the HDMI ports are set to 1.4 and for you to switch it to 2.0 or 2.1 unfortunately it is such an inconvenience but yeah you will need to unplug the hdmi cable first from the tv hit the set button on your remote go to hdmi then configure it to 2.1 the set button does not seem to work if your ps5 is already connected or if your playstation 5 is turned off if you click on the set button or if you move on to that uh, specific port, the PlayStation 5 will automatically turn on. All right, about input delays or lag, I actually don't feel any delays when I'm using this TV with PS5. You know, I'm just a casual player, not like competitive gamers. And as long as you set your picture mode to gaming, you should be good. Uh, speakers are actually loud, you know, if you set the volume high enough. It's not the best, but it will do. It surely lacks bass, but yeah, that's a given on televisions these days. They would always want you to spend more money on speakers. The TV has Dolby Audio and DTS HD, so it can send only 5.1 surround signal from 
the TV over to your receiver. You know, if you're watching Netflix or Amazon Prime or any of your streaming apps. So UI navigation. Uh, browsing the TV's front end is kind of basic yet effective. It's an easy interface where you have your most used apps and along it will, you know, sort of functions like YouTube's homepage where it will give you recommendations depending on the movies you previously watched. If you select a Netflix movie here, it will direct you right away to the movie's landing page, but you will still need to, you know, click on the play button. Would love it if it would play automatically. Now on to the Netflix app, browsing through the movie selection, while it's not the smoothest transition, like if you browse from one movie to another, it will take around one and a half second before it loads the next content. If you're just like me who takes more time browsing and choosing movies rather than like actually watching it, you can actually go here, the not sure what to watch section. This will play not a random movie, but it will truly use your search results and recently watched metadata to come up with a movie that you should like. Also, if you watch movies that supports Dolby Vision, you will see a Dolby Vision badge right there. There are two options for watching Dolby Vision on Netflix, either bright or dark. I find myself liking the dark option better, especially at night because, you know, it just looks natural. It doesn't look oversaturated or a bit contrasty. You know, it feels a bit better in the eyes as well, but during daytime, you would notice that the picture is not bright enough. So to compensate, you know, the bright sunlight and your fluorescent light, you know, better switch it to the Dolby Vision Bright option. Netflix does not have its own search feature. It uses the Google Assistant. So typing in keywords would be such a hassle in today's age where you already have, you know, voice assistant. You know, here's how you do it. The search for movies, use the keyword show me, find me, or search me. Then use either one of the cast or the director's name or categories like action or comedy. You can also include the word Netflix so that it only shows you results within the Netflix app. Show me Tom Cruise movies. If the keyword you use is part of a trending video, like let's say, show me squid show me on Netflix, squid. instead of giving you search result, it'll automatically play the squid game movie right away. Also, if it cannot find show any movie using Avengers your specific movie. keyword, then it'll give you search results outside of the app. It will include search results from, you know, YouTube, Amazon Prime, and Google Movies. The voice recognition can be a hit or miss sometimes, so talking more clearly and slowly can actually help. Show me squid. What the? Show me squid game. Spring gun, jeez. But it is just so cool to control all of your voice activated devices, you know, like lamps or your fan, even the TV itself, you can control it using your phone. Uh, let me actually show you. Turn off living room TV. You know, YouTube navigation is a little bit easier anywhere on the YouTube app. You know, just hit the voice command, the button, then say, show me phone reviews, boom, it direct you to the search results page. On Discovery Plus, Amazon Prime, they have a mic feature on the search area, but can't seem to make it work. You cannot do search commands on the actual app it's as well. What Google Assistant does is give you search results outside of the app that will also include results Space from your X other streaming apps. So cons, there are times where if I switch it to a different HDMI, let's say on my cable box, sometimes audio will not work. So how I normally resolve this is by turning off the TV using the power button on the center console and turning it back on, you know, that usually fixes the issue. You know, same thing happens with my Bluetooth devices like the soundbar or my Bluetooth headphone. There are times where no sound is coming in. So what I normally do is I just power cycle or turn up and turn on my 
headphones or my soundbar. It's actually quite irritating. Yeah, it, it kind of behaves like a Huawei phone, unfortunately. The TV's built-in mic doesn't work, as I mentioned before. I hope they resolve this on future update as having a TV on your kitchen and you're preparing for lunch, you know, just do a voice command to control the TV or whatever smart devices that you might have. That's going to be just awesome. Also, some feature just doesn't make sense, like the eARC and the HDMI 2.1. If someone's going to use this with an Atmos enabled speakers, along with supported receiver, those alone will cost you a minimum of 100,000 pesos. So why would someone purchase a 25,000 pesos TV if you have a budget like that? Yeah, doesn't really make sense. All right, conclusion. It is the cheapest 55-inch TV with all of its feature set. However, if you're quite invested with a PlayStation 5 or any other next-gen console out there and is a purist at heart, meaning you want to get the most out of your next-generation console, you really need to spend at least 60,000 pesos to achieve that. You know, we're talking about 120Hz refresh rate, 4K on an AMOLED panel. Uh, however, if budget is really an issue and maybe you're looking for just a basic 4K TV, you know, which would easily cost you 30,000 pesos or more, then this is a very good purchase. You get a huge ass TV with Android, so you can basically install all of the streaming apps available right now. You have Voice Assistant, which is only available to high-end TVs. Videos are actually quite smooth as well with MEMC. I mean, if, if it's your first time experiencing 4K, then this is a very solid purchase. The P1, even with its screaming flagship features, really can't magically turn a 25,000 pesos television into like an LG OLED C1 or a Sony Bravia TV. So will you dare to leap and you know purchase this TV or you'll still get to stick with the tried and tested brands like Samsung, LG, and Sony. Yeah, put it down on the comment section below and we'll discuss those. Anyways, this is Ian again. I'll be seeing you on the next video.